What's poppin'? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great episode of Simone with the Spizzards. I'm Simone, bringing you guys a daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here and you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you stop what you're doing, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. And the second link is to shop the official Simone with the Spizzards merch collection, get you the classic tee, the wavy tee, or the fly or die crew neck that comes in black, white, and Kelly green. And lastly, guys, turn your notification bells on because you already know the videos are coming live. Boom, 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 boom. And you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream. So, guys, let's get into this topic today. I already told you guys that James Harden will not be making his debut tonight versus the Celtics or Thursday night versus the Bucks or during the NBA All-Star game. He is going to be out throughout the All-Star break and he is rehabbing his hamstring. So he should make his debut, our first game after the All-Star break. I'm pretty sure it's versus the Timberwolves. And I believe that's the Friday, the first Friday after the All-Star break. So I think it's the 25th or 24th, but you guys know, don't quote me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't woes yet. But let's get into this topic today. So today, but James Harden has been working out with the team and he has been at practice. So he, he was at practice today, working out with the team. He was at practice yesterday. He does have his introductory press conference today as well. So we're gonna be looking out for sound bites and tidbits from that. But guys, today in this conversation, we're talking about buyout options for the Philadelphia 76ers. So I did round one of buyout options and you guys left a lot of great feedback on that video. So we're gonna be talking about some of the options that you guys left on that video. And I do appreciate you guys leaving some, um, some more options, you know what I'm saying? This is what it's all about. It's all about the community and the conversation, you know what I'm saying, the communication. So the number one guy I feel like um, we were discussing was Gary Harris. Now, originally, I wasn't looking into Gary Harris because I thought that Gary Harris was just a lone two guard, but little did I know Gary Harris can play the two and three. So Gary Harris right now is with the Orlando Magic, and one of my subscribers, Shabazz, said that Gary Harris could automatically come in and start for the Sixers. Um, he mentioned a scenario where we have James Harden and Gary Harris starting at the one and two, and then um, we bring Tyrese Maxey as the sixth man off the bench to lead the second unit. Now, I really love that scenario because we do need, um, there's a scenario where James Harden and Tyrese Maxey both start, but James Harden and Tyrese Maxey are only tr uh, real ball handlers on this team, and we will need some, one of them to at least be on the floor at all times, in my opinion. So it does make sense to bring Tyrese Maxey, um, let him run the offense off the bench. And in this scenario, we have Gary Harris at the two if we do get Gary Harris. And like I said, Gary Harris can also play the three and he is very young. He's only 26 or 27 years old. So even though he's a buyout market candidate, he is someone that can grow with the team even if we don't win this year. So he's my number one option right now. Now he is shooting 38% from the three right now, but he is a guy that can provide three and D um, help for the team. He's a guy who can create his own shot on the wing as well and like I said hold his own defensively because we can't ignore the fact that James Harden isn't the best defender you know what I'm saying so we do need to have some defense in our backcourt and then you guys know Danny Green can get real funky real streaky sometimes you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying so in those times where Danny Green is real cold we got Gary Harris who can play the three as well so Gary Harris seemed like the overall best player like I said I originally wasn't thinking about Gary Harris because I was only thinking of him as a two guard and I believe we have a lot of twos but like y'all mentioned Gary Harris can play the three as well and that's something that we definitely need to upgrade for so I'm all in on Gary Harris plus he would be the best two guard on our team he'll automatically be the best second best guard on our team behind um, James Harden so another um, two, three we can talk about is Eric Gordon. Now, Eric Gordon is a super vet. He's about 33 years old. He's with the Houston Rockets. He is a candidate as well. Now, Gary Harris is the optimal, like the best, the best, the best option for me. But if we don't get Gary Harris, because I do feel like a lot of teams are definitely going to be interested in him if he does get bought out. 
than Eric Gordon's option as well. Now, Eric Gordon is shooting like 43% from three right now, which is extremely great. And his, his three-point shooting is better than, um, than Gary Harris right now. But Gary Harris is the better defender. And like I said, we will need the defense of help in the backcourt when we have James Harden as our starting point guard. So, like I said, Eric Gordon is a good option. He's already played with um, James Harden in Houston, so they already have that chemistry together. Eric Gordon is a solid option. Definitely a solid option, but James, um, Gary Harris, in my opinion, is the best option because he's, what, six, seven years younger than um, Eric Gordon, and he's playing better defense right now. So those are two of my top options when it comes to the two, three right now. And I really do like um, Gary Harris. I can see a situation. I think Gary Harris would be way, 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 way more impactful than Eric Gordon. But Eric Gordon would definitely be some solid help on the team. But I think um, Gary Harris would be way more impactful just because of his overall game. And he's um, younger and, like I said, long, longer term option. So we won't be in the same boat next year trying to figure this year out again. You know what I'm saying? So yesterday we talked about some backup big help. Now I saw a couple of you guys in the comments talking about Paul. And when y'all are saying Paul, y'all know we got two Pauls on the team now. So I need y'all to clarify. Y'all talking about Paul Millsap or Paul Reed? Because I see a couple of people saying Paul Millsap backing up Joel Embiid. Now I thought Paul was just a straight up four. I see y'all talking about Paul is going to back up and be. I think y'all talking about Paul Reed because, in my opinion, Paul Millsap playing the five is not <laughs> going to be good. So we did talk about some backup five options um, yesterday, and one of the main guys that we talked about was Tristan Thompson. Now, Tristan Thompson, like I said, he's a solid um, – Backup five, in my opinion, a lot of you guys keep bringing up the off the court drama. And it's honestly funny because when you Google Tristan Thompson's name and you go to images, the first images that come up are not basketball images. It's like him at the club and like him out with the Kardashians. Like usually when you Google an NBA player, the first pics that come up are like pictures of them in uniform on the court. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, now, Tristan Thompson is a solid option. We talked about that. Another option for us could be Moses Brown. Now, you, Moses Brown was with the Dallas Mavericks. And then in the trade that brought um, Bertans and Dinwiddie to the Mavs, Moses Brown ended up getting waived by the Mavericks. Now, Moses Brown is a young player. Um, he's 22 years old. He's, this is his third season in the league. He appeared in 26 games for Dallas this season and averaged three points, two rebounds, and six minutes per game. Now, Moses Brown, he was only averaging six minutes per game this season, but last season when he was in OKC, he was averaging 21 minutes per game and he played in 43 games. So that is more of a better like litmus test of us to see like what his numbers are because he was averaging way more minutes than he was in Dallas. So last season he averaged 8.6 per game, 8.6 point per game and 8.9 rebounds. So almost nine rebounds, you guys, um, he averaged last season. So Moses Brown is definitely somebody who can add um, some rim protection on as a backup backup center for Joel and B. And like I said, Moses Brown is still very much young. So I do see a situation where if he works out, shoo, you can come back next season, you know, we'll see how you do. But like I said, I'm very impressed by the nine rebounds. Um, almost a little, almost a double double. I feel like an eight eight should be a category too. You know, a double double at eight eight because eight eight is up there. So he's a he was an eight eight um, backup guy. So you know. But guys, those are just a couple of options, you know, like I said, the main thing for me is um, Gary Harris in this situation. Like I said, I think he'll be the most impactful, but Eric Gordon and also Moses Brown are solid options as well. And of course, Tristan Thompson as well. But guys, let me know what you think. This is part two of the buyout options. Um, yeah, make sure you like this video, leave a comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see in my next video. And until I talk to you guys next time, bye.